If you remember stealing the Death Star plans, punching the Cow Dragon, and taking on the Dark Troopers, then you grew up playing Star Wars Dark Forces. And almost three decades after its release, this classic shooter has been remastered for the current generation of consoles and PC. Now, if you've followed my channel, then you know I've played a lot of Star Wars games growing up, but I never actually played the original Dark Forces. I was only about three when it first came out, and by the time I was old enough, there were so many other great Star Wars games including this game's sequels that Dark Forces just kind of passed me by. And so I thought playing this new remaster would be a great opportunity to finally experience Dark Forces while also seeing if it still holds up now that it's been modernized with a high frame rate and resolution, better lighting and upscaled textures. Alright, so the game begins shortly before the events of A New Hope with Karl Katan, Imperial Defector and Mercenary for Hire on a mission to steal the Death Star plans for the Rebel Alliance. The first the first level takes place on the secret Imperial base. Now, the original game was released in 1995, two years after the original Doom, and that game's influence is very evident here. But Dark Force is actually built on the original Doom by adding new features such as multi-floor levels and the ability to look up and down, which apparently was a really big deal back in 95. The remaster has been updated to include free aiming using both the mouse or the gamepad, which really does go a long way in modernizing the shooting mechanics. But this isn't a remake, it's very much a remaster. The textures are crisp and there is lighting bloom, but the dead Imperials with their ass up in the air still turn into 2D cutouts when you get close. But maybe that's part of the original game's charm. And if you are an old school fan or just hate visual fidelity, then you can turn on software rendering for that classic crispy look. But back to the gameplay. Now Kyle starts off with his trusty blaster, but this game does allow you to pick up enemy weapons. Hold on, why does the Stormtrooper blaster fire in a slightly different direction every time? Is this why they have such poor aim? Of course, this being a 30 year old game, don't expect things like waypoints, objectives flashing on the screen, or doors with big arrows saying enter me. Dark Forces isn't gonna hold your hand. This is an old school game which expects you to check every corner of the level. If you're lost, well, check the map, and if you're anything like me, you're gonna be doing that a lot. Oh wow, look, this Imperial base has its own DJ. Hey, can you play Sandstorm? Ah, there they are, the Death Star plans contained in a stripped Super Nintendo cartridge. Kyle then gets to the rooftop and escapes. The story picks up a year later after the destruction of the Death Star. Mon Mothma has once again contacted Kyle, this time to investigate the Imperial assault on Tac base. Turns out the Empire have been testing their deadly combat droids, the Dark Troopers. I've also known noticed Kyle is very hench in this first entry. I wonder why he lost all of his gains. And trust me, that muscle ain't just for appearance. Look at him send this Imperial officer flying with a single jab. Now this level has a very pretty purple sky, but unfortunately it's too dark. So you've got to high five this generator to switch on the light, only to realize the dark troopers have given the occupants of Tag Base the old Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru treatment. Kyle and his partner Jan then continue their investigation, which leads them to this fact. Moff Rebus, who looks less like an Imperial Moff and more like your typical Florida man. Unfortunately for Kyle, he also lives deep inside a sewer. A probe droid? Ah, uh, nothing a stiff jab can't fix. So this level is all about going on the sewer slip and slide and hitting these different switches. Oh, and also the Dinoga makes a cameo. Okay, finally I found Moff Florida Man. But why do you look so happy? You're literally surrounded by shit. Next is a mission to the Imperial Research Facility on the Planet Fest, which looks like some kind of 80s interior design catalog. You do get night vision goggles for the dark areas, but they will make everything look like an old Game Boy game. Now, the original game had no quick save functionality. Instead, you had a more traditional system. Kyle had a health bar and a number of lives, and if you'd run out of lives, you'd have to start the level again. And from what I could tell, the remaster hasn't added any save or quick save features, so good luck to all of you trying to play this on the go. Kyle's next mission takes him to the Virtual Boy planet where the Empire has set up a testing facility. Now, as I mentioned before, Dark Forces is very much an old school shooter. What I mean by that is you shouldn't go into this game expecting to just go through linear levels, blasting away at enemies, 
enemies until you reach the end. Sure, there are plenty of stormtroopers for you to shoot, but a sizable chunk of the gameplay also consists of exploration and backtracking. You'll be collecting keys, flipping switches, doing puzzles, all the while navigating your way through these long intertwining maps. Alright, detonator set. What? Oh my god, it's a T-800! What's that? Oh, apparently this is what a dark trooper looks like under the armor. Okay, so we finish off the naked dark trooper, blow up the facility, and bail. Unfortunately, this does piss off Darth Vader, who hires Boba Fett, and also imprisons Crix Maydine, who's actually been the spy feeding Kyle all the information. You see, apparently General Maydine started off as an Imperial officer, and now it's time to break him out of the detention center. Now, Dark Forces does have fall damage, but for some reason, every time Kyle falls to his death, he does an impression of a TIE fighter. Yeah. I'm also glad they kept the original game's MIDI soundtrack, which just sounds so nostalgic and charming. Whoa, how's this platform moving on its own? What kind of magic carpet technology is this? And so Kyle goes deep into the detention facility looking for Crix Maydeen. Hello, General Maydeen? No, it's just a training droid. General Maydeen? Ah, whatever that will do, we'll just have to give him a comb over. We then get a mission at the docking port of Ramsey's Head, where Kyle beats up some Gamorrean guards, gets this nifty machine gun, and follows a smuggler's ship down to the ice planet. And this is where the game's age kind of starts to show. We had a grey planet, a red planet, and now a blue planet. And there's no amount of upscaling that can fix these textures or simple geometry. I'm just saying, for £25, they could have maybe added some optional new environmental mental improvements. That being said, many of the gameplay mechanics, puzzles, and set pieces still hold up and are fun to play, which really does prove that good game design is timeless. This level's big gimmick are the conveyor belts, and Kyle once again shows us how hard of a man he really is. Look, he gets crushed by a hydraulic press and just walks it off. It seems like the floor of this room is covered in peanut butter. Oh god, the peanut butter's deadly. Get it off. Get it off. I also like how sometimes you'll come across a few Imperials just minding their own business. Uh, what do you fancy? for lunch. I don't know, Subway sounds good. Right, that's all three of the charges set. Oh no, another dark trooper. And this air is toxic. God, where's the gas mask? No, not the goggles. The goggles do nothing. Okay, with that done, we're on to Nar Shaddaa. That's right, the one from Jedi Outcast. Well, I, I guess it's actually from this game first. And I'm glad to see this planet has always been populated by three-eyed dickheads with grenades. You can tell the developers did their best to try and make this look like a big city, even if the buildings are always stacked vertically. In addition to the Grands, we also have the Trandoshans who drop these nifty concussion rifles. And this is another one of those maze levels that will have you checking your map every few seconds. Kyle then obtains another Super Nintendo cartridge, but him and Jan are sadly captured by none other than Jabba the Hutt and taken to his prison ship, which just looks like the sail barge in space. Okay, I've got to get my gear back and then rescue Jan. Hold on. What the hell is that? So what am I supposed to do? Just punch it in the nose? Oh, turns out Yes, once again, Kal Katan, the galaxy's hardest man. So you go through Jabba's ship, get your stuff back, admire some nice murals, and then rescue Jan. Our heroes then travel to the Imperial City planet, which I guess is supposed to be Coruscant. Kyle has to break into the ISO building, which apparently is the only place that can decode this Nova card. This whole level has this really interesting black and gold aesthetic. Again, this was before the prequel, so it's really fascinating how the developers were trying to visualize a more regal side of Star Wars, and also they have square spotlights. So you break into the Imperial Security Building, and then you have to do one of these old school puzzles. You know, the type that will make you rage quit and then ask your friends for advice the next day in school. This level ends with a boss fight against Boba Fett, who kind of looks like a big bee in this game. Kyle then travels to an Imperial fuel station, kills all the personnel on board, and then smuggles himself onto the Executor. Now that you're on your own, you won't have me to get you out of trouble. Lady, what are you on about? You drop me off at the start of each level and then bail. The Executor is a pretty standard level. You get these low poly TIE fighters who completely ignore this Jack Reacher looking guy shooting at them. Kyle takes on a few dark troopers and then ships himself to the Ark Hammer, a gigantic floating factory where they're building the dark troopers. This is the final level and naturally the game throws the kitchen sink at you. You've got stormtroopers, dark troopers, interrogation droid, evil cranes, evil escalators, evil puzzles, Luckily, at this point, you pretty much have all of the game's over-the-top weapons, including the Assault Cannon and the Fusion Cutter. The level ends with you taking on a bunch of dark troopers, but technically, the final boss is this one captain stationed by the shuttle. 
best boss ever. Kyle then blows up the arc hammer and flies away as Vader watches him from the executor. I don't understand, he's got the biggest Star Destroyer in the entire fleet, why don't you just shoot him? The plot armor is powerful with this one. And so there we have it, Star Wars Dark Forces. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I have no nostalgia connection to this game, and yet, even on first playthrough 30 years after release, Dark Forces still feels quintessentially Star Wars. Somehow, the developers managed to infuse this simple, blocky Doom clone with the spirit of the original trilogy. But what about the game in its remastered state? How does it hold up in 2024? Well, it's still very much a 30-year-old game that's had a contemporary touch-up, and you should go into it expecting that. Plus, considering the price tag, I think they could have added a few more quality of life features and optional enhancements. But that being said, I think the existing additions such as free aim and upscale textures combined with the foundation of the original game's solid design and fun gameplay make a worthwhile experience for both fans of the original and newcomers looking to experience a classic. But that's just my take. Please leave a comment below with your memories of the original Dark Forces and your thoughts on the remaster. As always, thanks for watching. Please consider supporting me on Patreon and a big thanks to all my existing patrons. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.